Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. That's a more energetic greeting. I like that. It's Tuesday, September 3. Hello, Ava. Good morning. Nobody's asking for Ava now, the co-host. Okay, good morning. So, today the gospel we're commenting about is from St. Luke, chapter 4, verses 31 to 37. Huh? It is about what? Can you guess? Can you guess, Jana? What is the gospel about? Anyway, let's read. Okay. <laughs> Jesus went down to Capernaum, a town of Galilee. He taught them on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teaching because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue, there was a man with the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out in a loud voice, What have we, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet, come out of him. And the rest of the gospel continues. But I will stop there and comment on... Um, on this phrase which um, uh, speaks a lot about truth when when they said they were astonished at his teaching because he spoke with authority because he spoke with authority if you recall the last gospel uh, gospel we were uh, reading was it yesterday or the other day where uh, he went into the say, uh, to a synagogue also, and he opened a scroll, right? And um, and he was reading the prophecy of Isaiah, which was about himself. And he said that this prophecy, this scripture, is being fulfilled right now in your very hearing, right? And also there, also there, the uh, the audience. His audience were astonished at uh, his knowledge of the scripture and what he was uh, talking about because he spoke with authority. So I'd like, to, I'd like to examine here, where does the authority of Jesus Christ come from? What was he talking about that he seemed to have spoken with authority? It gave the impression, it gave the impression to... Uh, to people that he spoke with authority. Okay? And the reason why, the reason is simple. The reason why Jesus Christ spoke with authority was because he was speaking the truth. What does that baby like? Honey, oh, maybe she likes her milk, honey? Okay, so the reason Jesus spoke with authority is because he always spoke the truth. And that's one big lesson that we can gather from this uh, gospel for today. Okay? Every time you speak the truth, people tend to look at you and regard you as somebody with authority. Somebody who is speaking sense. Somebody who is, is um, whose, whose uh, words can be relied upon. Somebody who can be trusted. Somebody who has integrity. Okay? In all of those uh, descriptions tend to give credibility to, to the person and to what he is saying. Okay? Pilate once asked Jesus, right, when, <laughs> when the baby is hungry, so she's making all of this noise. Okay, let's give her milk, mommy. Okay, she's settled? Okay, good. So, <clears throat> remember the question of Pilate? Uh, Pilate questioned uh, our Lord when... when uh, when he was being interrogated and Pilate asks him, what is truth? 
Right? What is truth? And Jesus, what was the answer of Jesus? I don't know. You don't know? Did he answer it? Yeah, that's the thing. He didn't answer it really quite <laughs> directly, right? He didn't answer. Okay. Uh, I got a little distracted and off track with, with uh, Ava's crying. So, but anyway, we were talking about truth. We were talking about the fact that somebody who speaks the truth has credibility and has mm -hmm. authority. Okay, there you go. Now, so um, people have grappled about the idea of truth for a very long time. Right? Um, somebody like Pilate didn't quite understand what truth is. And, um, and our Lord, of course, says, I am the way, the truth. In the life. Right? But what does that exactly mean? What does that exactly mean? And people for many centuries now have grappled about the idea of truth. In fact, uh, philosophers have, have uh, struggled to understand and to define what truth is. Okay? In fact, uh, to this day, there are about six or seven uh, theories about truth and what truth means to people what truth means uh, to us. But I think the most reliable and the most truthful <laughs> uh, definition of truth is what uh, St. Thomas Aquinas has given us. And what is that? He says, Veritas est adequatio intellectus et rei. Very nice thing to memorize. Now, huh, Joe? Adequatio, veritas est adequatio intellectus et rei meaning truth is adequatio the correspondence intellectus of the intellect or thought to reality okay? when there is a correspondence between what you know of what exists in reality if there is a correspondence to, of these two things then then you are speaking the truth. Okay? Then you know that what is being expressed is truthful. When what you're saying, what you're thinking, corresponds to what is in reality. So for example, if I say today, September 3rd, 2019, is that true or false? It is true, right? Because we know that in reality, it is September 3, 2019. If I say that uh, I am here, is that true or false? True. It's true, right? Because you can all see me being here. Right? So that is what truth is, according to St. Thomas. And, and that is, I think, a very good definition. Right? Of course, there are six or seven other theories about what truth might mean, but most of them... Um, are speculations that uh, are very difficult to prove. But St. Thomas uh, hit the nail on the head, so to speak, right? So, veritas est adequatio intellectus et rei. Very nice thing to memorize for everybody, right? But there is another source of truth. And this is the kind of truth that Jesus is talking about more when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And and the kind of truth he bears within himself that people perceive him to be an authority. An authority. Okay? And what is that kind of truth? It is the truth that is based precisely on the author of the truth. Okay? The author of the truth. Meaning... Something is also true because, because the author of that truth has said so, that this is the truth. So, for example, when Jesus Christ said that the Father and I are one, or He, he reveals to us the Godhead, okay? Well, what He is saying is true. And we can believe it to be true because he is the author of that truth. Okay? 
He was the one who made it. He was the one who created that truth. He is the author of that truth. So another way to verify whether something is true is to go back to the authorship of that truth. Okay. So for example, when Joseph here, uh, where is your uh, mask? And he created a helmet out of uh, paper mache. And he says, uh, I was asking him, oh, what, what, what is that? I mean, I, I couldn't quite make out what that thing was, right? Why don't we show him here? And then he said, oh, that's a helmet. A helmet made out of paper mache, right? Very creative of Joseph, right? But how am I to believe that it is actually a helmet, according to him? Well, he was the author of it. He made it. So he knows. He knows what it is. So when he says it's a helmet, I have enough uh, uh, confidence to believe that what he's telling me is true. Why? Because he was the one who created that helmet. Okay? So authorship of the truth is what also gives authority to the one who is speaking that truth. And notice here how author and authority have the same root. Right? Authority comes from authorship. See? So, to be an authority, to be considered an authority okay, in, in something means that you are the author of that expertise or of that product or of that something, whatever it is you, you authored. Okay? So that is exactly the same credibility that Jesus Christ has. They perceived him to have spoken with authority about what he was talking about. Well, because he was the author of that truth that he was talking about. Right? He was the creator of all things. He was God. He made all things. So anything and everything he spoke about, he spoke about with authority. Because he was the author of all of that. Okay? So this is the basis of our belief, of our, of our faith. Okay? We don't believe things just because what we think is true corresponds to reality. That's the philosophical understanding of it, right? That's the adequatio intellectus et rei that St. Thomas is talking about. There's a correspondence between our thought and reality. Okay? Our belief is not only based on that. It is based moreover on the fact that it is Christ himself who has revealed all of these matters of faith to us. It is Jesus Christ himself, the author of all creation, the, the author of all things, who spoke with authority to reveal the Godhead to us and to reveal all the things that we believe in, in our faith. See? So that is the basis of, of our faith. And as the Catechism says, we believe... We believe in the things that Jesus Christ has revealed because as God, as God, what does the Catechism say? He can neither deceive nor be deceived. Eh? You have that, uh, you have that uh, very explicit point in the Catechism. God, eh? uh, well, uh, the basis of our belief in the authority of God is because God has revealed these things to us. And God can neither deceive nor be deceived. So that's the way that we should understand the authority, right? The authority of Jesus Christ. When he spoke with authority, it was because he himself was the author of the truth that he was revealing to us. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So anyway, nice thing to memorize, huh? Your philosophy class for this morning. Veritas es adequatio intellectus et rei. I haven't read and heard that definition in a very long time. But anyway, when I was reviewing this, it came back to me. Okay, folks, that's it for us. Have a good day, everybody. We're off to Mass already. Uh -oh, we got to run. We're late. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.